Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and an unboxing of Revell's Peterbilt 359 uh, conventional. This is doesn't have a trailer. Um, it says it's a skill level four, but I've also been told in the trucking world, this is considered a snap tight kit. So I'm going to be doing this for our uh, March 2024 group build on Facebook. If you want to jump in and do a uh, snap tight kit, we're going to be all doing snap builds. And I'm going to try my, my uh, luck at a truck. I haven't done a, a semi since probably 1976, 77. So... <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting into this thing and getting, uh, doing something that's big. So let me open the box up because I, I already cut the wrapper, but I wanted to show you how this was packed. So let me get that out of the way. And this thing looks like it was packed in here really, really nice. So they got a, a breaker, a brace in here to keep everything down and settled. And um, what I'll do now is I'm going to pull everything out and I'm going to put you up in the, uh, cradle and we'll do a quick unboxing. All right. <laughs> uh, got everything out of the box, but I still left it all in the bag and I wanted to start out with the instructions. And this is the first time I'm seeing this and I knew that they would have decals in the instructions. Oh, nice flag. And I just wanted to check them out. I probably will be using the decals. I'm not going to go way overboard with this thing just because it's the first semi that I've done in uh, millennia. <laughs> and I just want to, I want to check and see how everything fits and rolls out. But I do need to get a semi um, and a uh, fuel trailer for the um, Texaco station. And uh, Robert from Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and a good friend and follower of my videos too, uh, he hooked me up with one. It's uh, the full tankard that, uh, that'll go with this. So we'll do this first and then I'll get back into the Roadster build and then we'll jump into that tanker too. And uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. So let's look at the tires. Now, I was told if you were lucky enough to get them in the sleeve, they're better tires, so I probably am going to have to do some work on these. And I see what he means. These are awful. Uh, these are very thin. And he was telling me that I, I'm going to have to put uh, packing on the inside of these. And I can see that. So good call on that, Robert. I appreciate that. But good tread. Uh, nice sidewalls on it look good they're just the sidewalls are very 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 thin so that's okay um, you all know that I like to keep as much stock as I can so we'll figure out how to make those work he showed me a couple of things um, and I'm sure we're gonna jump into that look at the size of this guy <laughs> there it is a bunch. This isn't a, a real uh, part heavy kit either, which I'm kind of glad with because like I said, I'm in the middle of a few builds and for my first semi, I, uh, I'm glad to start out with something a lot easier because I know some of these things can be intensive at, you know, to say the least. Boy, that bag is not cooperating. Make sure my bag's empty and in the trash she goes. So I'm already liking this. The frame is one dang piece. Look at that. And I got my visor on even. And I'm looking at this. And this is molded really, really nice. Looks like it's pretty squared up. It doesn't seem like there's any flash to speak of. Just a little sanding for the mold lines. Uh, I know nothing of what I'm looking at except for those are springs. <laughs> but the frame looks good. It looks square. It doesn't look bent at all. A um, couple mold line or pin marks. But 
I'm happy to see that I didn't have to assemble all these braces in here. Um, like I said, this is my first and I didn't want to, I'm, I'm glad it's not going to be super difficult here. So there's the frame in the box it goes. Next sprue, we got our fenders. Oh, and the fenders are separate. I'm glad to see that too because I have a couple of painting ideas that might have been a little bit difficult with the fenders in place. So I'm happy. Wow, look at the detail in here. Molded right in. That is nice. Uh, again, I know these are mud flaps. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the brace that goes on. This might be either the air cleaner or something else. <laughs> But good mold lines and uh, very little flash. Uh, this will be quick to clean, to paint. And I'm, I'm really glad I'm not seeing a whole boatload of chrome. That's, you know, I don't need a lot of chrome. Steering wheel is gargantua. I know this is the uh, air intake. Some air flasks are suspended. Uh, suspension and, and uh, our differentials and drive shaft. <laughs> More mud flaps. No name mud flaps. Maybe we can get a, a Playboy girl on there or something like that. Still keep it PG, but we'll see what we can do here. Nice. Look at the size of the drive shaft. Geez, it looks like a pole vault stick. And here's our interior with a bed. And the bed uh, isn't military made. And it's got some wrinkles in that bed sheet, but we'll let them slide. Nice interior. Not, a, not real prominent, but we can do some good painting with that. And I think with that, uh, that 0.2 millimeter uh, Mobius airbrush that I got from Gallery, I think we can get in real close in here and airbrush all this. So that'll be fun to try. But there we go, rims, our front suspension. Like I said, I'm pretty sure these are air flasks, but again, don't hold me to that because like I said, I'm pretty clueless and I'm really liking this isn't parts, parts heavy. Look at how big that engine is. Good golly, Miss Molly. <laughs> the intake is huge, man. <laughs> Boy, our turbo, our belts, cog belts too. Look at that. Nice. Detail out the wazoo here. Our fan looks really nice, easy to paint. Nice. Here's our um, gauge cluster and dash. And I don't know, I'm trying to tilt that. I'll bring it up and try to tilt it. Um, so you can see the reflection in the light, but that's wood grain and there's a, the, uh, gauges are molded in. I can do a whole lot with that with a little tiny brush and a pin and a few other things, but looking very good, very good stick shift drive shaft. Uh, looks like our steering column or this steering column and then steering gears really sharp. I don't know how much uh, detail I'll be able to do on the engine. The engine does look nice. Uh, I think it's a Cummins engine, but I'm not 100% sure, and I wouldn't know where anything goes. There's no spark plugs, so I'm already lost. <laughs> More air flasks, but looks good. Clean. Look at how nice the seats are here. Boy, oh boy. Sharp. I'm getting excited here. This is sweet. And now we're going to come in with our first bag of chrome. Oh, it looks like it's nicely done, too. I never cut the bags far enough to just pull it out. Uh -huh. Nice chrome. This is awful bright. Um, but you know what? I think I'm going to be okay with that. 
uh, panel liner on here and here. Some panel liner inside here. My phone is getting blown up tonight. Uh, front bumper. The uh, fog lights here, I think that's what they would be, are drilled out. They're supposed to be clear. Uh, nice handles. Stacks. The top for the air cleaner. The back side of the stacks. Some more... Uh, I don't know where that's going to go. Probably behind the cab. Uh, the fuel tanks. Fuel tanks are very bright. But uh, we'll see what we can do with that. I think those might end up getting shot with uh, a little bit of Tamiya's uh, flat and some mixed in quick shine. Same with that front bumper. That's awful bright. But nice mold. Zero flash. Um, and it's not over chrome to where you lo lose detail. Like I said, the, the detail on the diamond plate is awesome. So, and we got another bag of chrome coming at us. Ooh. Finally opened the bag all the way for a change. Look at how big. That that radiator is going to take me a whole bottle of panel liner <laughs> just to do the radiator. Uh, the headlights are molded into the radiator. Um, if I'm going to light this, which I'm not sure if I am for the first time, I might not just uh, so that I can spend more time doing everything else. But if I do, I'll have to figure out how to get the wires back into the back and maybe I'll hide them under the bed. But like I said, we'll see. I'm not even thinking about lighting it yet. That might be my next one. This one, I just, boy, the CB antennas are nice and thin. Most of the time, they'd be twice as thick as that. That's done very well. And what I'll do is I'll snap that off way back here before I cut any more of these, loosen this up, and then come in here. But our chrome here is looking... Very bright, but very well done. Um, probably going to hit this again with the, the uh, Tamiya's uh, matte or flat with quickshine to dull it down just a little bit. But really, really well done. Look at those rims. Jeez, there's enough bolts in there, isn't there? And I, I'm going to be first honest, I don't know anything about semi-trucks. So, I'm going to be shooting at the hip, and I'm not going to pretend like I know everything about or anything about a semi-truck, except for I like them, and I really need one for my uh, diorama that's going on. The windshield is very well done. Windshield wipers are molded into the glass. That might be the first time I've ever seen that. <laughs> Not sure if that'll pick up. Yeah, it looks like it is. But how about that? Then we got our headlight lenses, taillight lenses. Nice done. Nicely done. Very clear. The only uh, marks on this glass is where I just put my dang fingers on it. So I'm putting that right back in the box while we speak. Robert, I don't know what you're doing to me, man, but I'm getting excited about digging into this thing. And again, this is all part of a group build for Grandpa Mark's Hobbies on Facebook. So if you want to join in or just jump over and see what we're doing, uh, it is Grandpa Mark's Hobbies group. So love to see you there. This is huge. Here's the hood. Man, I don't think my first apartment was as big as his hood. <laughs> Peterbilt logo, nicely molded in. I like this. I like this a lot. Uh, this build, I'm going to do more worrying about painting. Look at this cab. And not as much of how I'm going to light things or, or super detail them. This will be kind of a quicker build, but a fun build. Man, this is huge. I'm going to have to buy a gallon of paint. 
<laughs> but it's nicely done, and like you said, you really don't need glue in here, and I can see that. These are made to where they, they're supposed to snap together. I can see that. They just didn't call it a snap-tight kit, but I'll go face value with what, what he said, and uh, we'll go from there, but this is huge. Look at that. I got some cool ideas for paint job. Um, and again, like I said, this one is going to be more for the paint than for trying to get lights on it and super detail the engine and things like that. Because this is actually going to be pushed back in the back side of my diorama with a fuel tanker uh, on the back, filling up the, the underground tanks. So good call on doing a semi. That is awesome. Man, that's huge. Um, but with that, that's everything in the box, so there's not a whole lot. I'll be able to really uh, focus on all the detail work here uh, with painting and all that. But with this, I will let you go. Wish me luck. Uh, leave me any comments about what, what you think about how we should paint this. Like I said, I have a couple ideas, but I'm always game for uh, listening to everybody. Uh, a lot more better ideas than I have. I've told, I'll tell you that right now. So with that, I'll let you go. Um, Y'all have a great day and a better tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching.